faithful in all that we do and in every situation that we find ourselves. Father, we are grateful unto you, Lord. Thank you for this grace that we have to be alive to praise and to thank you. Lord, grant, O oh God, that our praises, our thanksgiving, will come unto you as a sweet-smelling savour in the name of Jesus. Even as we want to share your word, bless your word in our hearts. Grant the opening of our eyes of understanding in the name of Jesus. Bless us through your word once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Understanding the mysteries of the kingdom. Don't forget that this year, our focus is on God's kingdom. That kingdom is not feasible, but it is real. It is real. That is where you are if you have given your life to Jesus. If you have been saved and you know it, you are not just assisting the world, you are not just living in the world, you are living right in God's kingdom. And that same kingdom is the secret place of the Most High God. That is his dwelling place. That is his hiding place. It's a place that is safe. If you are looking for a place that is safe in this world, you won't find it. The only place that is safe is in God. And when you come to his kingdom, you abide in the secret place of the Most High God. Hallelujah. There's need for us to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. The kingdom of God operates on principles. There are a lot of mysteries in God's kingdom. And if you want to be blessed, you must understand those mysteries. For the person that be read to us, the disciples came to him. Say, why, why are you talking to these people in parables? He just said, yes. He's not giving it to them. Is to you that has been given to understand the mysteries of the, of the kingdom of heaven. Don't forget that the kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven on earth. The kingdom of God in heaven operating on earth. We are his ambassadors. We are the citizens of God's kingdom if you have given your life to Jesus. And when you are in this kingdom, how do you know that you are growing? There are two major indices that you need to examine and use to measure your level of growth in this kingdom. Number one, how much do you conform to the image of Christ? How much is your life changing and transformed to become like Jesus? If you are not experiencing growth in that area, you are not growing. If people that knew you before to be angry, an angry fellow, and you are still angry to today. <laughs> you are not growing, even though you have been there for donkey years. How? What is the magnitude? To what degree is your life conforming to the image of Christ? When people see you, can they see Jesus in your life? If not, all you are coming to church, you are coming for Bible studies, will be a waste. Make up your mind to grow spiritually. Another one that will help you to grow is your understanding, your comprehension of the mysteries, the principles of the kingdom. Because when we talk about fruitfulness, you talk about progress, you talk about sources, you talk about power. Those things, they don't happen to one by mistake. It's by your understanding of the mysteries the principles, and as you apply them to your life, you see yourself succeeding. If you don't know the principles of God on prosperity, you may not prosper even though you are there. You need to know the principles, the mysteries behind it. And one of the mysteries of the kingdom that will make you to rise, that will make you to make progress and achieve victory with ease, is the mystery of thanksgiving. It's a mystery. And not everyone understands it. But when God will help you to understand it, you move from one level of glory to another. Impossible situations will become possible. You begin to walk in victory. You'll be a successful person. 
Why? Because we are just thankful. It's a lifestyle. God has been so good to us last year. If you have been to the hospital, you will appreciate what God has done for you. If you are engaged or you are, it happened that you had an accident and you, you came out alive and you come and you want to thank God I had an accident and God saved me. There's a way you give that testimony casually. There's a way you give it with gratitude in your heart. There's a difference. If somebody gives you 1,000, how do you thank him? Thank you. Somebody gives you 50,000, say thank you. Somebody gives you 1 million, say thank you. Is there anything wrong with that? You cannot say anything wrong. Uh, you don't appreciate what God is doing in your life because the gift of 1,000 is not 1 million. There's a big difference. The more God blesses you, the more your thanksgiving should increase to show that you truly appreciate you attach value to that which God has done in your life. That's the reason why many of us cannot enjoy more from God because we take everything so casually. God deliver you to come and give thanks, you will not come and give thanks. Well, you don't need to come to church to give thanks. Yes, I know it. In your house, if you will not come here to give thanks, make sure you do it in your world, in your house. But David said, I will praise God in the congregation of the people. Yes! Because people are encouraged when you give your testimony. When you thank God before the people of God. Somebody have occasion to also thank God. Amen. This ministry, this ministry of thanksgiving will help you to rise. That is what will help you to reign in God's kingdom. How many of you want to reign? The Bible says, Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto himself. To reign here on earth. What will help you to reign and to rise with speed is this mystery of thanksgiving. Because nothing happens without the proper understanding of those mysteries. It's not open to everyone. But when God loves you, he will help you to understand those mysteries. What are mysteries? Things that you cannot understand ordinarily. The understanding is not very very open. It is something that is hidden. But God helps you to have the understanding of it. Amen. Every time you come to express your gratitude to God, expect something bigger in return. That is it. Because when you come to give thanks to God, you have come to give thanks to the King. And let's come back to the earthly realm. Do you go to a king without a gift? Eh? Do you have some countries like that? I mean, some tribes, you go to greet your king and you just go. Even if you go to a king without any gift, however small, it's because you have not apportioned any value to him. No honor. And the Bible says, give honor to whom honor is deep. You want to appear before the king? You don't go empty-handed. It's not correct. It's contrary to heaven's protocol. Even earthly protocol will not accept it. I know there is a king. There is a country that a king rules. We don't have president. What is that? What's the name of that country? Huh? Saudi? You said? UAE. We have some countries like that that you don't have prime minister, you don't have president. He's a king that still rules. But you don't go to a king. So when we come to give thanks to God, have the understanding that you are coming before the king, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the one who has power to do and undo. You don't just come to before him casually with nothing. When we talk about thanksgiving, you, you use your mouth to do what? To do that. 
but he does not end up there. Because the, the king you have come here to meet, to thank, you must put something in your hands for the king of kings. It's a mystery. Somebody will just say, uh -uh, it's not just to give thanks to God. I have thanked God now. I have danced before him. It's not complete. Why? Because you are coming before the king. It's a mystery. Those who have it will always be blessed by it. You know, the, you know King Solomon was very, very rich. Abi? When Queen of Sheba was coming to greet him, did, he, did she go there empty handed? She came. She had all this wisdom. And she came with a lot of precious gifts. Gold. Let's read. Let's read part of it. First Kings 10, 10. First Kings 10, 10. You don't go to a king without any gift. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices, and precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the king, queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Verse 13. Verse 13. King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired. Which one is greater? Which one is greater? Queen of Sheba chose some things as gifts for the king. But the king gave more. Every time you give to God, whatever that is thanks, coupled with whatever substance that go from you, you get something more in return. He gave the queen as she desired and asked for, wow, free check. Beside what he had given her out of his own bounty. So, when you give thanks to God, there's a royal blessing that follows you. Don't miss it. Tell somebody, don't miss it. This is wonderful. There's a mystery behind thanksgiving. When you are thankful, with ease, you see God meeting your needs. It's a lifestyle that is acceptable in God's kingdom. A lifestyle of grumbling, Murmuring is not acceptable. Hallelujah. That is why David said, I will praise the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Abi, I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. It's a mystery. When God helps you to see it, oh my God, your life will never remain the same. In every situation, in 1 Thessalonians 5 18, he said, Give thanks to God in everything. Abi? In everything, give thanks. In everything, don't forget to give thanks. Even in bad situations. Live a life of thanksgiving. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Why is it the will of God? Because it is the will of God for you to be blessed. And God knows that if you are not thankful, the blessings will not come. No matter he says in Luke chapter 6, 38. He said, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together. Shall men give unto you? When you give to God, when you give to men, God has a way. You have given to one, and it will cause men. Can you see the increase? Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Praise down. Give me King James. That is, that's what I want us to see. 
Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down and shake it together and running over shall he may. You give to one, God will cause men, not one man. He will cause men to give back to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So whenever you give thanks, when you give to, to, to the king, you are placing a demand. You are placing a demand on him. And because the king is rich, he will always bless you in return. Be thankful according to the abundance of what you have received and enjoyed from God. Thanksgiving must be timely. Don't postpone it. The reason why you postpone it is because you don't appreciate it. How can somebody help you? Somebody blesses your life. And you cannot say thank you. Only after two, three days, you are saying thank you. It's because you do not value it. Very simple. Unless you do not see that person. Unless you have network. But network problem. But it cannot be for two, three days. Very simple. And somebody who blesses your life that you can see. And you cannot say thank you. You see God that you cannot see. God wants us to thank him. Yes. But it must start from you expressing your gratitude to everything that God helps people to do for you. Learn to say thank you. Your uncle pays your, your, your school fees. Say thank you, uncle. Oh, I cannot thank you enough. The fact that you are paid the dowry of your wife does not mean that when she blesses you with good food on your table, I find it very hard to say thank you there. How many of us husbands here, you, you say thank you to your wife when she cooks good food? Yes, wave your hand to the Lord. You see, very few. And why was that? Because of pride in your heart. After all, I have paid your dowry. After all, it's my money that I gave you to prepare the food. Can your mon is your money food? You see how you are short-sighted? Parochia. You see, because even if you have all those millions, and even if you have, even if you have gone to the market to buy those things, you still need somebody to mix them together in the right proportion for it to be tasty. And you don't appreciate that? Don't forget. Thank God for everything. David said in Psalm 3, he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Do not forget all his benefits. All the benefits, daily benefits, yearly benefits, weekly benefits, monthly benefits. Don't forget. Don't claim you forgot. God will not take it kindly with you. Some of us are very full. We are good in criticism. The first thing you should appreciate in a man, when you see a man that you have to do with, the first thing you should do is to appreciate him first. Even if you see any flaws in him, that's not the starting place. And when you don't appreciate something, you can't get the best out of him. Very simple. When all you can do is just to criticize. Those who did it in the scriptures, what happened to them? Was God happy with them? Let's go to the scriptures. Deuteronomy 28. No. Numbers 11.3. Numbers 11.3. God brought them out of Egypt. And he gave them manna. They were eating manna every day. And they said, ah. Why should it be manna every day? Ungrateful souls. What if they have been hungry to eat manna and going hungry? Which one is better? The one you have gotten, should you not appreciate it first? They say, ah, ah. We need flesh. Enough of this manna. 
but they have never appreciated God for the manna. They were eating and eating. What happened? And the mixed multitude. I said verse 3. And it Mm-mm. There's a mix up. The, in that scripture, while they were eating the manna in their mouth, I mean the flesh, God answered them when they cried. Abby, he answered them. He gave them the manna, I mean the flesh. The Bible says when the flesh was in their teeth, when they were crushing it in their mouth, what happened? He struck them with a plague. And many of them died. They died in thousands. Why? Because they did not learn to appreciate what they had. Learn to appreciate whatever you have. Thank God for your children. Even if they are not behaving well, appreciate God for them. Eh? Thank God. Don't say, oh God, why do you give me this? What type of child is this? Ah, somebody is looking for a child. You never get. You have gotten one, but it's not behaving the way you want. You better thank God first. Thank God. When you don't thank God, God will not change your situation. He will not change your meal. He will not change your desire. God saw a desire in their heart, which is good. But God wants them to thank Him first. They ask for another thing because everyone that asks receives. God gave them the flesh, but to their own world, to their destruction. Be thankful always. That's the first thing that must come to your heart. Don't see the negative first. In every man, there's something good. Abi? Even though there's a bad aspect. But appreciate God for the good that you can see in that individual first. Be timely. Lack of thanksgiving is what limits our blessings. Don't waste time to thank Him. Because if you waste time, you can forget. You will not be able to remember. And I want you to know that to be thankful is godly. It is spiritual. That is righteousness. Amen. Amen. Anything that is the will of God is righteousness. Be thankful to God. Be thankful to man. Don't say after all, it's my father. He, is, he has a duty. Yes, he has the right to give you food to eat. After you have eaten, say thank you, mommy. Thank you, daddy. Children, you hear that? Oh, children are not here. The same thing applies to all of us. If you want God to move you from where you are to the next level, thank you for where you are. Appreciate God. And when you are thanking Him, thank Him from your heart. There's a way you can say, well, thank you, Lord. At least I'm getting some small, small coins from this one. But this one cannot do anything I want you to just give me a better job. You are not thanking God. Go, you see, from your heart, your heart speaks volume whenever you stand before God. You can't hide yourself. If it's coming from your heart, He knows it. When you're not appreciative enough, He knows it. But why will you not? You can't do that before this king. Don't grieve Him by not thanking Him from your heart. I also want to encourage you your thankfulness should be what? Should be intentional. Be intentional about it. Don't make it casual. Be intentional. And I want you to know that thanksgiving is a proof of spiritual what? Maturity. When you don't mature, you will not have the God to thank God. Because God wants us to appreciate Him for everything He does. If you have gone to the hospital, you see some people that are tied. Human beings, not animal. Their leg tied up so that everything can be fixed and it will not shake. 
so that you can be healed. If you can carry your leg, thank God. If you can raise your arm, thank God. You can breathe with your nose. Uh -uh. People are breathing with oxygen. They are in the hospital. Don't take anything for granted. If you don't know what to do at all. Do you now see, if you want to be grateful to God, you will see that you have many things to give thanks for. Your thanksgiving will be more than what? Your prayers and requests. Because if you want to begin to thank God for everything that God does, it will take more time than asking Him to do this, to do that. And that is what God wants. How many of you will not be moved to do more when somebody appreciates your kind gesture that you show to him or her? To someone. You will be happy. You are glad. You want to do more for that person. So when we are thankful to God, he does more for us. Let this mystery no longer remain a mystery in our heart. Let's walk with this understanding and with that light, living our lives in thankfulness all the days of our lives. If somebody is tired or in the hospital, you can imagine the pain, the inconvenience. Somebody has been sleeping on his bed. Abby, he has been sleeping, sleeping fine on the bed. But this time around, he has to be hung. No. Thank God. Thank God always. I pray that his praise will not depart from our mouth. We will live a, thank, a life that is full of thanksgiving to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want us to sing this song. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. You've been good to be. You've been good to me. You've been good to me, Jesus. You've been good. remember. The one you can remember. The one you cannot remember. Say, Lord, I thank you. Jesus, I praise you. You have been good to me. Thank you for showing me mercy. Thank you for the forgiveness of my sins. Thank you, Lord, for being my Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healed me. Jehovah Shalom, my peace. Jehovah Hadunah. Lord, I thank you. For the gift of life. For some health. For the provisions. For the success. Thank you. For all you do. Jadiya no barra kushkiya. Kali ma no se antoni abra no santa. Jadiya no kosa no mata. Everything he bless your name. I so magnify the Lord. My spirit praise your name. 
You are worthy of my praise. Thank God for your children. Thank you for your husband. Thank God for your wife. Thank God for your job. Thank God for your business. Appreciate him. Be grateful to God for your movement. From one point to another. For God preserving you. Thank God that you are not kidnapped. Thank God you have not become your dwelling place has not turned to become a bush. Give God praise. Thank God for the air you breathe. Thank God for the water you drink. Thank God for making you whole. Appreciate God for your organs that are still working. Your system that are still working. Lord, we thank you for all our organs that are still working. Our systems, they have not broken down by your power. You sustain them. We thank you. For all our tissues, our cells that are alive, working perfectly, we give you praise. Oh, glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Thank God. Thank God. Appreciate you. Thank God for all the accomplishments. It is by your power. It is by your grace. It has been you, Lord. It has been you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Our Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. Thanks. We give you thanks for all. So blessed, we are so blessed. I saw the promise. We give you that. We give you that. Lepers yield. Where are the remaining nine? Say, Lord, I have come to say thank you. Just accept my thanks, Lord. Accept our thanksgiving, Lord. 
we have come to say thank you father for all that you have done for us individually and collectively we have come to say thank you we have come to say thank you for you have been good to us you have been gracious you have been merciful you have blessed us you have blessed us you have helped us you are there for us at every point we were not put to shame we were not reproached by our enemies you did not give them an opportunity we give you thanks we give you praise for constant supply of all that we need in this life we are grateful for being there in our journeys we thank you for all that the bless us with as families we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you on behalf of this church we say thank you on behalf of every family we say thank you father on behalf of every man every woman we say thank you on behalf of the babies in the womb we say thank you on behalf of the children we say thank you you have been good to us in jesus name we give thanks Thank you.